Fantastic, sir. Fantastic. Welcome, Welcome once again. Welcome once again. Be here, we've got Be Sean Kadavilis and Karen Patel, but it's a very warm welcome to Nairobi. It's a uh, what? It's a quarter to twelve here, uh, going to the afternoon, and I don't know what. Uh, how are you today? Are you at home? Are you in transit back home after after Italy? I'm at home actually. Yeah, I try to uh, recharge the battery. You know, a rally week is always a bit uh, exhausting for us. It's uh, it's pretty intense, uh, especially this rally Sardinia. We had like very long days. For example, the Friday, first day of the race, we we kind of uh, almost uh, spent 15 hours uh, between the moment we leave the hotel in the morning and the moment we came back to the service park in the evening. So it was very long days. So I tried to uh, to recover, uh, make this call with you, and actually going to go to the gym with my coach after that. Seb, uh, congratulations. Uh, my name is Sean. Uh, we are, of course, between Eddie and I, you'll be seeing a lot of us. We'll be emceeing uh, the WRC Safari Rally. Uh, you will see us at the start. Uh, you will also see us uh, during this, the spectator stages as well and also at the finish. Uh, so you'll be seeing a lot of us. Uh, congratulations, first of all, uh, Sardinia Rally. That's your third win uh, this season. Now, we were just talking about how you don't like uh, sweeping the roads. Uh, how difficult was it... Uh, in the uh, gravel services of Sardinia, how difficult was that event, and also considering uh, how Oit Tanek was performing until his retirement? Hey, well, I think I heard uh, uh, just before that, uh, that this answer was quite correct. He said nobody likes to sweep the road. I mean, for me, I always uh, try to fight for fair condition for the concurrent, and, and you know, it's a world championship. So, of course, uh, since many years, I've been very, very often leading a championship and very often in this position to start first and got this disadvantage. And yeah, it's something uh, I have to say after some years, I learned to take some, uh, let's say, mm. be a bit more relaxed about it. But for sure, it, for me, it doesn't have a real place in the world championship. There is a solution to make it more fair, but the... Unfortunately, uh, FIA doesn't want it, so we have to deal with it. And Sardinia is definitely one of the most difficult to open the road because it's uh, often very dry, very sandy uh, road. But uh, in this, in this, uh, it still worked this time for me. I took a lot of risk on Friday. I made a, a I think, very good job with uh, Julian during the Ricky to have a good note and. Uh, and then we give a big push on, on Friday and we managed to still be in a good position. Uh, P3 on Friday evening was, uh, was really amazing. After that, the road position was better. Uh, we managed to catch Danny Solo on the next morning. Uh, but of course, Oit uh, is a, I mean, a very uh, talented driver. He's been world champion uh, two years ago and uh, he's uh, someone that if you give him this advantage, of course, he take advantage of it and he, he had a gap that I could not catch. Unfortunately for him, uh, he hit these rocks and, uh, and damaged the car. So that offers the, the chance then to take the lead. And uh, after that point, of course, I, uh, I had to do my best to keep it up to the end and secure another victory. So, no, of course, I didn't really plan to win this rally. Uh, I expected to suffer. But, uh, of course, uh, I take it with pleasure and happy to come to the next rally in Kenya with a bit more lead, as uh, we expect a very tough challenge on your road. To you, we have here one of our top um, local drivers. His name is Karan Patel, and we've been having a conversation. It is the Red Bull Drivers Hangout, of course, as you may know, and we are also joined by members of uh, the Fourth Estate. The, the, we have media and journalists here who are in the background who, who might have one or two questions to ask you. So I'll hand over to Karan, who I'm sure you must have a question, as also as a colleague, as a driver to you. Hi, Seb. Um, yeah, as as you as you heard me saying, uh, nobody likes sweeping the road. But uh, I was just wondering if if you had to choose uh, a surface on which uh, you'd rather prefer to sweep, what kind of surface would it be, and where? <laughs> well, the truth is, uh, in our days, I almost uh, prefer always to drive on tarmac because on tarmac the conditions most of the time stay more consistent for every drivers and. Uh, and there is no sweeping problem, so that that's the the surface I will choose. Um, but um, I, I don't know, honestly. I also like a lot driving on gravel. The, this car, the WSC, are really amazing and and really really fun to drive and slide on on the gravel surface. So 
Uh, I have to say many rallies are enjoyable in the World Championship and uh, what I like also a lot after this uh, 15 years of career uh, more or less that I had is to go to new rally and discover new stages. So uh, that's why I'm excited to come to your country and uh, and see what's the wait for us. Uh, I've heard a lot about the tough condition and very challenging. So I think the, the Ricky is going to be uh, very important and uh, maybe you can already give me some advice. WRC uh, hosting the Safari Rally back on the calendar. How big is this for you, the return of Kenya onto the World Rally Championship? Because it's one of those revered rounds in the WRC that has been missed for 19 years. In Kenya here, we are celebrating. It's been an amazing journey. We missed out last year, of course, for obvious reasons. And we understand some of the WRC rider drivers are already learning some Kiswahili. I don't know if you've already started already. We can share some few tips here and there. But what is it to you? How big is this return for you as a leading World Rally driver? Of course, it's very nice to see the excitement uh, that uh, that people have, that you guys have uh, about about this rally. It's uh, uh, you know a world championship, and we didn't had uh, an event on the African continent, so it's nice to have it back. And uh, and Kenya has such a history with rally that I think, uh, of course, the drivers of our generations have never been there. So I think we are all excited uh, to see that. Uh, and uh, you know, in all days, WSC have became really very very competitive where we drive flat out from the start to the end of the rally and and it's really uh driving on the limit almost like secret secret racing but on open roads and i think in in, in kenya gonna be probably a little bit different we're gonna i think have to change our approach and be a bit more uh, let's say clever keep the highs uh, wide open and and Try to survive because i think uh yeah it's it will be an adventure and uh, our cars haven't faced this kind of tough condition for, for, for a long time, so it's going to be interesting. Seb, a lot is being said about the conditions of the uh, Safari Rally. Uh, it is in the Rift Valley, uh, as you may know. Uh, volcanic soil will be a, a key uh, concern, possibly, for you guys, the soft uh, volcanic soil and also the big rocks uh, there and also the changing conditions. I don't know how much you've been told about what happened during the Equator Rally. Uh, that was the Africa Championship round that was held uh, just about uh, a month ago or so, uh, where it was dry during the recce, but then it poured uh, on the first day of the rally. Uh, conditions were completely different. Uh, what, what have you been told about the conditions uh, of the rally? If I'm so honest, not so much yet. I haven't started really... I mean, I'm, I'm usually, you know, focusing rally per rally during the calendar. So now, you know, we just finished uh, Sardinia. And uh, like I say, I just take a bit of time to, to recover and really fully charge the battery. And then I'm going to really start my preparation for, for Kenya. So honestly, so far, I don't know much about the event. Of course, I know and I've heard that the condition can change very quickly. And uh, that's the, when the heavy rain is coming, it's becoming super challenging. Uh, so, no, I mean, of course, kind of adapt very quickly, I think, to, to, to what we see. Um, one of the things you mentioned is about the ground, which is a volcanic uh, um, stone, which can be very difficult, I think, for tires. It's no secret that at the moment we have uh, quite some issue with tires, so I think it can play a big role uh, one more time during this rally, and and that's going to be a, yeah, a key element where we have to uh, try to stay out of trouble. So, no, honestly, so far I don't know much, but as soon as I'm going to get a bit of video, uh, proper video from the road, I'm going to try maybe to have a first look. And like I say, I think the most important will anyway happen during the, the two Ricky days or even three Ricky days that we have uh, uh, before the events, because that's, that's where we're going to really find out what's, uh, yeah, what it's about. Kenyans, we are very passionate about uh, motorsports, and Safari, of course, is our flagship now that it's coming back to the calendar. But I'm sure we've got fans who are following this conversation online, and they'd just like to know, what is the journey like now that you've just come from one rally? I know you've mentioned you're on a break just to recharge, but just to give us a scenario of how the journey proceeds on now between now and when you start your... When you, bid, uh, when you leave home to start making your way to, to Kenya. What's happen happening between now 
and the day you leave to start coming to Kenya? Just to give us a journey for that to understand. Uh, to be honest, I think we, are, we already had the tests to prepare a Kenyan rally. I mean, we are very limited in the tests uh, in the World Rally Championship. We only get one day of testing between, um, uh, before sorry, every World. European event, which means like theoretically we didn't add any day to prepare Rally Kenya. But we uh, decided with the team to use our day to prepare Sardinia uh, on the road, which hopefully was a bit, uh, let, let's say, looking like Kenyan condition, more rough, more demanding for the car. So we already did the test, but actually now I'm going to have a test next week uh, to prepare already the next one, the Estonian rally already. So that's more or less the only uh, day I'm going to have like to, to in the car uh, before before Kenya. And honestly, about the rest, I I gonna I think everybody know that for me my family is very important and I need to I like to spend time with them. So I'm gonna. Enjoy time at home on Sunday, the coming Sunday is the fifth birthday for my son. So, of course, I have a big job to try to make a, a very good day for him. I, I want that he enjoy and celebrate as much as he can his birthday. So, yeah, basically, it's going to be some, some training, of course, around. I mentioned that after our call now, I go to the gym with my coach and, of course, prepare also on the bike, do some cardio and try to come fit for, for the rally. But uh, other than that, also some good quality time with my family. That's, that's what I need to, uh, to be happy and, and to come uh, with the full motivation for the next event. Okay, we have a question for you, Seb. Seb, I'm Eric Ching from Standard Newspaper. Uh, I just want to know, do you have any pre-rally ritual? What do you engage in that gets your adrenaline pumped? Any food, maybe music? Do you listen to any music to pump you? Up for the rally? Super question, Seb. Uh, to be honest, not really. I don't have really any ritual or any something like during a rally because I mentioned before, you know, it's very intensive weeks usually that we have. So actually quite a lot of work we do on our day is also after the Ricky with, with the video, try to prepare the event and try to be in the rhythm. So no, not really. I think... Uh, if I will have a ritual today, it will be maybe call my son in the morning before the stages, and he is giving me like a, like a kiss, you know, through the phone, through a FaceTime call, and that will be my motivation, you know, to go and uh, try to give my best. As as you always tell me that Papa, you have to be fastest and try to bring me uh, a trophy. <laughs> so that's my um, my my ritual and my motivation. Absolutely fantastic! A real gentleman, uh, the seven times world champion and also the World Championship leader uh, in 2021. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, that is the Red Bull athlete. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sebastian Oje. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you speaking to us. Uh, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. And of course, uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, Seb. Have a nice day. See you very soon. Bye-bye, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, that's uh, Sebastian Oje uh, speaking to us. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, we're just back. Uh, thank you so much, by the way, uh, to the journalists and also Peter Jenga, who's still here as well. Uh, Peter, thank you so much uh, for taking the time out this morning uh, to, to speak, uh, to hang out with us, of course, at the Red Bull Drivers Hangout. Um, we're here with uh, Karan Patel. Uh, your thoughts, uh, what, what struck out for you uh, in terms of what he had to say? Uh, well, you know, he, he wants to go to Le Mans, which is, uh, which is quite uh, interesting uh uh you know uh, uh what he wants to do is go to Le Mans and do some circuit racing which is which is good because rally drivers make for very good circuit uh drivers in my opinion so that'll be nice to see but uh he said he has a family now and uh, that's his priority and that's uh, that's very important and uh you know it's, it's a good thing it's interesting one of the questions i wanted to ask him uh, we've seen uh, some legends go to the dakar uh, the likes of Loeb, uh, Carlos Sainz. Uh, do, do you see him doing that in the future? I think he, he's, he's done his fair share of bumps and jumps. And, uh, you know, Le Mans is what he says he wants to do, and Dakar is the, the total opposite of a Le Mans. So I don't, I don't see him doing a Dakar rally per se. But, um, he you know, he, he's, a, he's a racer at the end of the day. We never stop racing, in my opinion. So... He, he only stated that um, 
he doesn't want to take part in a full WRC season, which leaves the door open for just a couple of events. He might be back for the safari mm. in 2022. Privately, maybe. Yeah. yeah, privately or with Toyota. I mean, it depends on the relationship uh, he has with the team. True. Um, and I'm sure any manufacturer would like to have him uh, represent them. Mm. So, you know, he won't have to fight for a drive for sure. For sure. Yeah, so you know, no full full season, but um, I think we'll be seeing him again in 2022. All right, fantastic, Karan, a pleasure. Thank you. It's an honor to sit with you. Thank you. And of course, a uh, great company with Sean Cardovilis. We've come to the end of this uh, session. We've had the Red Bull Drivers Hangout, a unique platform where we got a chance to speak to officials from WRC Safari Rally Limited and of course Karan Patel, one of our leading top uh, uh, rally drivers here in Kenya, will be taking part in the WRC Safari Rally in a Ford Fiesta R5. So defi definitely that name, be sure to be uh, ready to catch him out when he comes into the main action in the 24th to the 27th of June. And uh, this was an opportunity to also speak to the World Rally Championship leader, that is Sebastian uh, Ogier. Uh, we will be also talking to Kale Rovan Pera later on, but we will let you know how you'll be able to get that link. He's also another uh, young, I think you'll sit together on the same table with Kale, you'd have some amazing conversations, considering he, he's, he's younger than you, I think. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's and I think you... 20 years old. 20 yeah. years old, so I think yeah. you'll have a lot to exchange there. Yeah. So that is a conversation that is also coming up. You'll so probably be teaching me a few things. Exactly. exactly. So it's an amazing opportunity, the exchange of ideas, and that's what really is making this safari rally very unique in its own sense. So thank you so much for all those who've been streaming with us live on Capital FM Kenya. Thank you so much. Capital FM is the official English broadcaster for the WRC Safari Rally 2021, and we'll be bringing you more updates consecutively when the event takes off on the 27th to the 27th, 24th to the 27th of June. And also really saying a big thank you to Sankara Hotel, and also saying a big thank you to the journalists, the media that is here. We've got uh, motorsports stakeholders in the country here. I can see Trey Fix is here somewhere just uh, chilling out and seeing what's going on around here. Good to have you here. Samson Ateka and everybody else who's here, thank you so much for being part of this amazing Hangout, Sean. And of course, uh, thank you very much to Red Bull. Of course, this would not be possible. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, Peter and Jenga, we've seen you uh, stay here with us as well. We really appreciate uh, you staying uh, with us uh, for the duration of the event. We know you're extremely busy with the Safari Rally, and of course, uh, we'll be a lot of us here will be engaging with you uh, over the next few weeks until the Safari Rally. So once again, thank you so much. Uh, Karen, just one quick question uh, before we leave. Finishing in terms of the Safari Rally, uh, where would you be happy with uh, extremely competitive uh, category you're in, uh, not only with the international WRC2 drivers, uh, but the likes of Flash, uh, you've got the... Uh, Benengai uh, team as well, uh, Amon Raj uh, Rai as well, within that scope as well. Uh, very, very, probably as competitive as the main P1 uh, category. Where would you be happy uh, finishing in the Safari Rally? Uh, that's a good question, Sean. Um, given the circumstances and the number of uh, WRC P1 drivers, um, we hope that they all finish, but um, it is going to be a challenging rally and we have the upper hand in terms of our experience. Uh, nevertheless, uh, for me, uh, top 10, I would be happy with, but uh, we'll, we'll aim for a bit better than that. Amazing. All right. Wishing you all the best, Karan. Thank you. Wishing you all the best. All right. So Karan Patel with us. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, once again, uh, Red Bull, uh, we really, really appreciate uh, everything you've done for us over the last couple of days. Uh, Sankara Hotel, uh, Capital FM, uh, thank you so much uh, to the team uh, for making this possible uh, through the streaming uh, on your Facebook page. And of course, uh, live on air uh, on Capital FM. So thank you so much. Uh, we will be interviewing uh, Kale Rovenbera, as Eddie Kimani uh, mentioned uh, this afternoon. And of course, we'll let you know where you can hear that uh, interview uh, as we get an interesting insight. But for now, thank you so much. On behalf of Eddie Kimani, I'm Sean Cardavillis. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in to this live stream. <laughs>